a look at putting a Kawasaki audio system in the Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR. We're going to do an AM FM Bluetooth source unit that comes in a nice source unit panel. It's going to install right in the pocket, right in the center of your mule. Then we're also going to do a pair of visor overhead six and a half inch waterproof coax speakers that are going to go right up here into the rocks. Super easy to install. Then we're going to do another pair of six and a half inch coax. I'm going to show you the tools you're going to need. It's going to take you about an hour and a half. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks so you don't make any mistakes and the system's going to sound great. So let's get it over into the shop and get started. Included with this system are an AM FM Bluetooth Hyphonics radio assembly, upper Hyphonics speaker pods for the left and the right, lower Hyphonics speaker pods for the left and the right, power harness, speaker harnessing, a small white antenna wire, the dual input accessory for a 3.5 millimeter and USB inputs that installs in the glove box, and all the hardware you're going to need. You're going to be in and out of this installation in about one and a half hours. Always review the manual before you begin working on your machine. The manual has a full list of standard hand tools that you'll need to do this installation. Don't forget, safety glasses and a work light are also a good idea. First, we're going to pull the push rivets from the top of the dash. Next, put the shifter in neutral and allow some space so that you can move the dash. Gently pull the dash towards you while you're sitting on the seat. Next, remove the cables from the back of the 12 volt connectors. Use lightweight painter's tape to label the connectors so you can reconnect appropriately. We use the code white equals copper. That's going to become the red wire on the new audio harness and black equals silver, which will be the black wire on the new audio harness. This code and connectors is clearly outlined in the manual. On the other side of the dash, label the connectors by color, G, R, W, and B, green, red, white, and black. Pull the ignition connector. You might need a flathead to lift the locking tab, it's a little tight. Loosely place the shifter grip back on the shaft to avoid harpooning yourself while working on the vehicle. Next thing up is we're going to make a hole for our uh, accessory that gives us a 3.5 and a USB. Mark the glove box as defined in the owner's manual. Be cautious of any wires that are behind where you're going to drill. Let the drill bit do the work, don't force it. Remove the large plastic nut and insert the assembly into the hole. Make sure that the two rubber bushings are on the inside and outside of the assembly. The bushing on the front of the assembly also functions as a cap or a lid to fill the holes of the USB and 3.5 millimeter adapter when they're not in use. Finger tight here is enough. It's also smart to have a USB stick or a jump drive with a few songs preloaded. This will be a big help when you're testing the audio system later in the installation. Finally, set the excess wires to the side until we're working on the dash wiring for the Hyphonics radio assembly. Find a flat work surface to protect the dash, maybe your toolbox or the bed of the vehicle. Use lightweight painter's tape and a straight edge to mark the back of the dash pocket. You just want to find center. Use the one inch hole saw to cut a hole. As before, let the drill do the work, don't rush it. This hole will allow the wires of the radio assembly to pass through into the dash. We're not mounting the Hyphonics radio assembly yet, only preparing the pocket and the harness for the next steps. Pass the back of the speaker harness with the blue connectors and the white antenna wire through the back of the dash pocket. Do not mount the radio assembly to the dash pocket at this point. Pass the components like the fuse holder and the other connectors through one at a time. Now the Hyphonics radio assembly can be connected to the harness. Connect the large harness and listen for a good click. Connect the white antenna wire. 
Assure that the small caps on the RCA cables stay covered. Pack all the slack from the harness and additional connectors into this pocket. Note the Hyphonics radio and dash assembly should fit nicely into place to allow us to mark the dash for drilling pilot holes for the mounting screws. You will do the actual mounting process sitting in the seat with the radio back in place. Now let's loosely put the dash back into position in the vehicle. Put the radio dash panel into place. Use an awl or a pick to make four small marks to target the drill bit. Unplug the harness and set the whole radio dash assembly to the side. Drill four holes using the 3 seconds inch bit in the spot where you just marked those four holes on the dash. Now push your harness and antenna back in. Don't secure the dash until all your wiring to the connectors is complete after we do an audio test. You're going to like this innovative max clamp design for mounting these speakers overhead. This clamp and mounting system allows one person to open the clamp, push the tab over the roll bar, snap it tight, and screw it down. Screws need to secure easily. If you're getting a cross-thread feeling, you might nudge the speaker housing left or right to assure that the screws are lining up. Use hand tools to secure to avoid over-tightening. Run the harness across the roll cage and down the A-pillar. That's the passenger side vertical roll cage pipe. Use a couple wire ties to secure the harnesses. As your harnesses come down the roll cage on the passenger side, you'll want to route them through the opening in the body by disconnecting them from the jumpers. You will remove the passenger side cup holder to gain access to the inside of the dash. Pass the thin bullet connectors into the dash cavity and reconnect to the larger connectors. Reach your left hand over the top of the glove box to the cup holder. Then you can route your overhead wire harnesses to the center of the dash. You may want to use a work light while marking drill holes under the dash. It gets pretty dark down here. Use the lightweight painter's tape and a sharpie to mark the place on the inner body panel where you will want to drill. Mark the three mounting holes to be drilled for the push rivets right on the tape. Now set the speaker aside, drill the three holes. Be careful not to go deeper than the plastic panel of the vehicle. Once the holes for the mounting are complete, you can wire up the speaker. Put the harness into the notch in the housing. Connect the small connector to the small terminal. Large connector to the large terminal. Mount the speaker with the three push rivets, making sure that the speaker harness remains outside the pod. You'll notice that notch for the speaker wire. Mount the speaker on the other side of the vehicle with the exact same process. Now, working behind the dash, let's gather all the harnesses together. Use zip ties to keep everything nice and neat. It's very important to avoid this shifting mechanism. The wide antenna wire and the dual input accessory connectors you mounted in the glove box will also be routed to the Hyphonics radio assembly in this area. You can use another zip tie through the eyelet of the antenna to keep it extended. Coil up any excess cables and put a zip tie on them to keep it secure. And there we go. So that's our 3.5 input, that's our USB, that's our antenna, this is our speaker, this is our overhead speakers, and this is our other speaker down below in the dash. We're set. Now we can get the dash panel back in place. We will need to remove the shift knob again. Connect the power harness to the positive and negative jumper. Then plug the full harness into the dash power accessory. Remember, we marked white equals copper, which is the red wire on the audio harness, and black equals silver, which is the black wire on the audio harness. This is again clearly outlined in the manual. Now we're doing our final connections inside the dash pocket. Connect the large radio connector. Connect the AUX1 from the radio to the RCA that's coming from the adapter in the glove box. Connect the USB from the radio to the USB cable from the adapter in the glove box. 
Make sure the white antenna wire is plugged in. Make sure the unused RCA waterproof caps are sealed tight. Place the dash back into place, making sure that all the harnesses and connectors remain behind the dash. Screw in using a hand torx. Do not over tighten. Next, move to the left side of the dash and reconnect your ignition and reconnect dash switches to your color code on the tape. Next, we're working behind the dash to make all the connections to the Hyphonix radio. Connect the speaker harnesses for the dash and overhead speaker pods. You'll notice that they are white, gray, green, and purple, all on a one-way connector. Notice the tooth on one side of the connector, which prevents you from making a mistake. Confirm the shifter mechanism is clear of all wires and harnesses. Plug in the speedometer connection. Make sure to reposition the rubber cowling over the speedo connector. Do not put in the push pins until after the final audio test. We're nearly done. Reconnect the negative of the battery so we can power up the system. Check that all your vehicle switches are powered up. Start the machine. Go through all the inputs on your radio. You've got USB, AM, FM, Bluetooth. Check the manual for the Bluetooth pairing process.